October last year, Holikartia disappeared for 12 days. Was she really lost in a national park or was it all just a hoax? Let's investigate. If you enjoy mysteries, true crime, disappearances and conspiracies, feel free to subscribe and turn on notifications for more content like this. I also have a Patreon, so if you're interested in supporting the channel and accessing some bonus content, feel free to check it out, a link will be in the description. On the 6th of October 2020, 38-year-old Holly Cartier disappeared after hiking in the Zion National Park in Utah, USA. At the time of her disappearance, she had recently lost her job as a nanny due to the pandemic and had been travelling the country in a converted van, visiting different national parks. She lived in California and had spent a few weeks at her home before leaving for Utah in the middle of the night in October. She left her phone behind and didn't tell anyone where she was going. On the day of her disappearance, Holly arrived at Zion National Park, parked her car in Springdale and took a private shuttle to the grotto area at 1.30pm. She was supposed to return on the 4.40pm shuttle later that day, though some sources state that she planned to stay there for two days, but either way she didn't return when she was supposed to. Holly's housemate reported her missing and the searches began. Holly had used her credit card to pay the entry fee at Zion, so authorities knew roughly where to start looking. Holly's daughter Kaylee was understandably very worried about her mum, especially considering she hadn't taken any supplies with her and only had the clothes she was wearing, a blanket and a hammock in her backpack. Kaylee stated that Holly was an experienced hiker and that she'd hiked alone before and was familiar with Zion National Park. In fact, Holly and Kaylee had hiked in the National Park together around a month before Holly's disappearance for Kaylee's 19th birthday. A GoFundMe was set up to cover the costs of the search for Holly, as many friends and family had needed to take time off work and possibly even stay in hotels to dedicate their time to searching. Over $12,000 were raised and donated to the fundraiser. Then on the 18th of October, 12 days after she'd initially gone missing, Holly, or her hammock, reports Vary, was seen by another hiker who reported it to the park rangers. They managed to find her and she was able to leave with her family before receiving medical care. Holly's sister told usatoday.com how Holly had gone to Zion for a spiritual journey, she just wanted to connect with nature and read her bible. She had already started a food fast which her sister became aware of when they met for dinner a few days before and Holly didn't eat anything. On the first day of Holly's trip, she had taken a big hike which weakened her. She set up a hammock but when she sat on it, it swung back and she hit her head on the tree which made her disorientated. She stayed close to the Virgin River as she figured her best chance of survival was staying close to a water source. She used a sharpie to mark on a tree each day that she'd been lost. It seemed that Holly may have suffered some kind of mental breakdown, at least that's what her sister believes. That could have been the reason for the seemingly spur of the moment trip, though Holly is described by family as being spontaneous and a free spirit, so this trip didn't seem too out of character for her. Of course her rescue was great news for family and friends, as well as anyone who had been following the story in the news. But it wasn't long before people became suspicious and started asking questions and noticing inconsistencies in Holly's story. It was quite baffling that it had taken 12 days for Holly to be found when she claimed that she'd remained near the river which was close to a hiking trail and close to a road. She was also found only half a mile away from the trailhead where the shuttle had dropped her off. Zion National Park isn't a huge park relatively. Reports vary but it seems that the main part of the park where people hike seems to be only around 15 miles across. It's also quite busy. According to MSN.com, it was the fourth most visited national park in 2019, with four and a half million tourists visiting. How is it that rescue teams and volunteers searched a relatively small area for 10 days without finding Holly, and that none of the many other hikers came across her either? Holly claimed that in the 12 days she was missing, she did see one other hiker, but she was so dehydrated that she couldn't even open her mouth, let alone shout for help. Which brings us to another question. How did she survive for 12 days with no water? When this first happened, many articles reported that she had survived by drinking the water out of the river. But Virgin River is known to contain cyanobacteria, which produces dangerous nervous system toxins, meaning it can be very harmful to health, potentially even fatal. 
Sadly, in July 2020, a dog died after playing in the river as a result of the bacteria. If Holly had drank the water for 12 days, it's likely she would have died or at least become seriously ill. Her sister Jamie later claimed that she didn't actually drink the water because she was aware of the health risks, but she did use the water to moisten her mouth, spitting it out after rinsing rather than drinking it. But if she didn't drink the water, how didn't she dehydrate? Washington County Sheriff Sergeant Daryl Cashin stated that drinking the toxic water for 12 days likely would have killed Holly. Quote, if she had been drinking that water, unless she had some really high immune system, she would have been very, very ill and probably unable to come out on her own. She either took a lot of water with her or had another clean water source that was near here, but the Virgin River is not that source. Even three months later, we are yet to hear what that clean water source was, as Holly still claims that she never drank any water while she was missing. But she could not have survived 12 days without water, unless she managed to find a food source that had a high water content. As a general rule, you can survive three days without water and three weeks without food. So it's possible that if she was eating food with a high water content, that those three days could have been extended. But her sister Gillian said that she survived on no food at all. One article I read stated that Holly's sister believed she managed to survive because she was used to fasting, but even taking that into consideration, 12 days with no food or water is a long time. And on the note of fasting, why did Holly choose to do so just days before she planned to go on a big hike? Being an experienced hiker, she should have known that this would have made her weaker and probably more tired. She also should have known that not taking her phone with her or telling anyone where she was going was extremely risky. Some of these discrepancies could be explained by the possibility of Holly having a mental breakdown. Maybe she acted irresponsibly by fasting and not taking a phone with her and not telling anyone where she was going, because this might have just been a spur-of-the-moment decision in the midst of a manic episode of some kind. We do know that Holly's sister believes that she might have had a mental breakdown, and we also know that Holly checked herself into a mental wellness centre shortly after she was found, which could imply that her mental state might have contributed to aspects of this. That could also explain some of the details not adding up. I mean, if Holly was not in the best mental state to begin with, and then she suffered a head injury which supposedly caused a concussion, it makes sense that there might be some inconsistencies in her story. But it doesn't explain how she managed to survive 12 days with no food or water without being found. And it also doesn't explain the inconsistencies between official statements and those made by the family. If you believe the hoax theory, you might believe that Holly only checked herself into a mental wellness centre just to make it all look more realistic. There are many more discrepancies in Holly's story. The condition she was found in varies depending on the source, with the official statements and those made by the family contradicting each other. According to usatoday.com, a press release of Holly's rescue said she was able to leave of her own capability with minimal assistance, which is obviously pretty strange. 12 days in the wilderness with little to no food or water and with a head injury, and she didn't need much assistance to leave. Holly's sister disputes this, however, stating that she had to stop every five feet to rest and a ranger had to stand behind her in case she fell. Apparently they drove her straight to the emergency room where she was diagnosed with a concussion and treated for foot injuries due to the cold, as well as famine and dehydration. Other articles also state that the family said she had lost 15 pounds, her kidneys were failing and she was covered in bruises. But if she was so ill and weak, why wasn't an ambulance called straight away? It sounds like they found her and then called the family to come and pick her up, but if she was as ill as the family claimed, it just makes no sense why she wouldn't have been taken away in an ambulance. The way that she was found is also a little strange. Apparently Holly, or her hammock, reports Fairy, was seen by a park visitor who sent a tip to the rangers. If this person actually saw Holly, why wouldn't they try to help her while they made that call, rather than, as it sounds, just telling the rangers then leaving? And if they saw her hammock, what made them think it was Holly's? And why didn't they look around the area? If Holly really couldn't even open her mouth because she was so weak and dehydrated, surely she'd be very close to the hammock. I don't think this necessarily counts towards Holly fabricating all this, unless the person that submitted the tip was a friend or family member that was in on this, but it is just a strange thing that I've never heard of anything similar happening in another missing persons case. Surely if you knew someone was missing and you'd seen them or their items, you'd at least try and look around the area to see if you could offer them immediate help as well as calling the rangers. 
Holly said that she marked on a tree with a sharpie how many days she'd been missing. I don't want to read too far into this photo, but it does look a bit strange. Some people have suggested it was photoshopped, and I'm not sure I think that, but it somehow just doesn't look like a line was made each day, like it could have been all done at once, maybe. Also, she managed to do pretty neat lines, despite almost being at death's door, according to the family. If those marks were made on each consecutive day, that would suggest that she remained in this one spot for the whole 12 days, which I think makes it even more baffling that she wasn't found all that time, despite being so close to the trailhead and where people were hiking. Another possibly minor thing that struck me as odd is that she even had a sharpie on her to begin with. I mean, she brought no food or water or any other supplies, but she did bring a sharpie. And also, I'm not about to judge a missing person's actions by any means, but marking down days on a tree or a wall or something is a pretty cliche thing that you'd see in movies. Now, it does just kind of make you wonder, considering there's no obvious reason that she'd even have a sharpie on her to begin with. Some people believe that this whole thing was a hoax and that Holly intentionally went missing either for a financial gain or just simply for attention and that her family may have also been in on it as well. She could have done this in one of two ways, either by taking supplies with her and hiding out in Zion actively evading searches or by spending those 12 days somewhere else and only returning to Zion on the day that she was found. I mentioned earlier that a GoFundMe had been set up a few days after Holly disappeared, and over $12,000 was donated. It is possible that the plan from the beginning, which her family were in on, was that Holly would disappear for a few days, a fundraiser would be set up, and when she was found, any money that had been donated could be kept by her and her family, under the guise of it paying for her aftercare. Rumours were also circulating on social media that Holly had faked her own disappearance so she could get a movie made about her. This screenshot of a comment on a post by KSL5TV reads, I know her, I grew up with her and her daughter, our parents are next door neighbours and I know a lot. It's drama with her baby daddy. She has a self-destructive mode going on. Many of us are and have been worried, but her daughter told us she is wanting a movie, so her crap is and should be called out as she was never lost in her own mind. She planned this. She came a few weeks ago to Zion, planned her agenda, then as a hope to gain fame. Another comment on one of Holly's Facebook posts from two years ago read, I was part of the search and recovery group and have been for over 20 years. I know Zion like the back of my hand. Miss Holly was not in Zion during that 12 days is my final opinion. We covered everything and her story doesn't add up with staying next to the river either. I don't know if I believe the tree hit her in the head story, but I do believe she's got head problems and needs to get some mental help soon. Everyone is aware that her disappearance was a choice. She probably will never tell the truth and the story will disappear, which is best, I suppose, because people with this bad of mental health problems don't need the world knowing what they did also. I hope they use the money to get some real help psychologically. Most of these searches end with a fallen hiker and it doesn't have a happy ending. Please, Holly, get your life and head together because you get the chance to. So obviously these are just things said by people on Facebook. We don't know how true they are and we don't know that the second comment really was from someone who participated in the search. But there are so many comments online on Facebook and other social media from people who claim to have helped in the search in some way that also believe that Holly faked her own disappearance. It's clear that authorities are suspicious of Holly's story too. According to CrimeOnline.com, the Washington County Sheriff's Office has opened an investigation into Holly's disappearance after they received numerous tips, quote, indicating the incident was possibly conceived and carried out as part of a plan to fraudulently generate money to a GoFundMe account for Cartier's recovery. Which is very interesting, it shows that suspicion goes beyond a few unverifiable rumours on Facebook. Another possibility is that Holly really was missing for those 12 days, but that either her or her family exaggerated the circumstances, either for financial gain or just for publicity. Maybe the claim that she had no food or water wasn't true. She might have found a clean water source and maybe even had some food on her. And if that was the case, maybe the family exaggerated how ill she was when she was found, but she might have still been genuinely missing and still banged her head. Or what if she just went for a hike and planned to stay out there that long, but realising halfway through that she hadn't told anyone or taken a phone with her that people could potentially be looking for her, so maybe she just made up the story to make herself look less bad, but that's pretty unlikely in my opinion, and I don't believe that theory personally, I'm just kind of throwing ideas out there. 
As for my thoughts, I'm definitely suspicious of Holly and her family and I think there's probably a lot of information that isn't publicly known. I don't think I could confidently say that Holly or her family definitely fabricated this whole thing for money or publicity. The GoFundMe was only set up a couple of days before Holly was found. You'd think if it was all a plot to get money from fundraising that it would have been set up sooner, although I suppose they could have thought that would make it look more suspicious. They also offered refunds to anyone who regretted their donations, though the last I heard only $50 had been refunded. It seems the family is very up for doing interviews and talking to reporters about this, so maybe it's an attention thing, but so far Holly hasn't been interviewed herself. I guess only time will tell if Holly ends up getting a movie deal or something, but as for now, if their plan was to get attention, then it doesn't seem to have gone particularly well, considering that most of the attention they're receiving right now is much more negative than positive. Overall, I absolutely think it's a possibility that this could have been a hoax for whatever reason. There are so many details that don't add up in this story. But I just don't think there's enough evidence to say that's definitively what happened. I don't by any means believe every part of Holly's story, but I do think there are other possible explanations behind the inconsistencies that aren't just the whole thing being fabricated. Considering we have no direct quotes from Holly and everything we know has just been passed on by her sisters, it is possible that they didn't get everything she said totally right and that could explain some of the inconsistencies. The fact that investigators are suspicious of Holly's story means there are likely good reasons for them to be. Though that said, still nothing has come from the investigation even three months later. I'm not sure how long it would typically take for an investigation like this to conclude, but I haven't heard any updates, so I guess we'll just have to wait and see. I do think it's possible that there was some kind of mental health issue at play here, whether Holly was genuinely lost or whether she made the whole thing up. So with that being said, I hope it goes without saying, but please don't attempt to contact or harass Holly or her family. Even if you think this was a hoax, there's still a chance that it wasn't, and regardless, if there's even a possibility that Holly might have been suffering from some kind of mental illness, please don't contribute to any problems that she might have been facing. I'd be interested to hear your thoughts in the comments. Do you believe Holly's disappearance was genuine, or do you think it was a hoax? Or do you believe some parts of the story, but not all of it? If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Thursday in a new video.